Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we'll take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we'll take a look at people's opinion on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. And I am Ola Torreira Majekodumi Oniru. On today's show, we will explore the systemic exclusion of women from the presidential race as Nigerians prepare to head to the polls in 2023. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Regardless of how riveting the race for Nigeria's number one seat is today, one thing that is conspicuously missing from the collection of the very powerful players on the political arena is the presence of a woman as one of the top candidates. This is made even more evident, especially when other African countries like Liberia, Tanzania, and Ethiopia, to mention a few, have had and still have female presidents. For a country that is widely regarded as the giant of Africa, Nigeria has never elected a female president. To date, Nigeria's presidential candidates in general elections have mostly been all men. As we approach the 2023 general elections, it is quite disappointing to mention that none of Nigeria's political parties have a female candidate or a female running mate on the ballot. This has led to several questions relating to why women's representation at the topmost level of governance is alarmingly invisible in Nigeria. At this point, we'll pause to have a look at a short but very special report on the presidential front runners. The 2023 presidential election in Nigeria is one that will be closely monitored by the people as there has been a major outcry for a change at the helm of affairs in the country. With rising insecurity and a failing economy, the next president has a lot of work to do to uplift the country. Next year general election, which kicks off with the presidential ballot on Saturday, February 25, is less than 177 days away. But the current standing of the major presidential candidates and their parties gleaned from assessment of public opinion is still too close to call, even though campaigns are yet to officially begin. Of all the candidates competing for the number one office in the land, three have distinguished themselves out from the lot, and they have since dominated the turf in networking, crowd pulling, and awareness creation. The three top candidates are the People's Democratic Party's Atiku Abubakar, All Progressive Congresses Bola Tunubu and Peter Obi of the Labour Party. While on the fringes is the new Nigeria People's Party's Rabi Kwankwanso, who could help shape the fortunes of any of the candidates if he eventually decides to align or form alliance. This week on the morning show here on Arise, we had Dr. Ruben Abati and Rufai Oseni give the analysis on the chances of the three top candidates in the race. In the this day analysis, uh, we're told that, look, this at the end of the day looks like Three major runners, a three horse race, Atiku Abubakar of the PDP, Bola Chinumbu of the APC, Peter Obi of the Labour Party. And let's take Atiku Abubakar. Atiku Abubakar, yes, he has experience. He can claim that he has the capacity. He can also claim that he has the required competence. The major obstacle that he faces is this sentiment about zoning. So the major problem that he has in that regard is that of the need to pacify the South. In his own case, religion, which is also a major issue uh, in this election, may not be uh, quite a major issue because he has tried to balance the ticket with Patrick uh, Ifan Yokoa, the governor of uh, Delta State. Now, let's take uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, the presidential candidate of the uh, APC, where his strongest base will seem to be the Southwest. Again, back to 1979. The people of the Southwest are likely to vote massively for him. Uh, you know, not just because uh, he says Emilokon, but because he's their own. And then the Labour Party, led by uh, Peter B, is also, you know, putting up a good show in, in the Southwest. But that has to be qualified, specifically in the urban areas. And among young people who spend half of the time on uh, on uh, social media. 
Now, there is a momentum across the Southwest, uh, particularly in Lagos, that is also likely to work in favor of uh, Peter Obi. So you shouldn't be surprised if you see Peter Obi picking up a lot of votes among young people uh, in the Southwest. Most of the key candidates you see in this election will, barring anything, will win their areas. Elections are largely tribal in this country. You can't run away from that. Religious base, and that's why the Muslim Muslim ticket is a big factor for Bola Tinubu. Also, they are tribal. That's why a lot of people are arguing that in his quest to want to win the Northwest, it would have been probably a better deal rather than taking a canoe man. Than to it would have been better for him to take a Fulani man where they can air out the votes in the Northwest. But also, it's also going to be based on the record of President Obama the Buhari, economic problems, insecurity, and those things. People predominantly in the North are upset. Their people are being killed. And it's going to form the bulk of the way they'll vote. I have tried to check historical antecedents in Nigeria polity that has there been any time where there was an economic slump and people rewarded the candidates, hardly the case. So this is the first time that the candidates will be coming in at the time my economy is so down like it is now. But anyway, the difference is that this is not an, this is not an incumbent candidate. So there's no incumbent candidate on this ballot. Also, age will play another factor. 2023 will make it 30 years Elijah Atiku Abubakar has been running the race. Vibrantly, a lot of Nigerians want a younger candidate, you know, to be able to mash out things and all of that. Health records, people have talked about that too. Also, Arise News analyst Waziri Adio and Mamu Jega on our primetime show Newsnight compared the coming election with the 1979 presidential election, which produced regional champions across political parties like the defunct Unity Party of Nigeria, National Party of Nigeria, Nigerian People's Party, the Great Nigerian People's Party, and the People's Redemption Party. There are four candidates uh, that are likely to make a good showing. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's like a flashback to what I consider to be the most competitive election that we've had in this country, presidential election we've had in this country, which was in 1979. In 1979, if you recall, uh, we had uh, uh, five political parties and we had 19 states. And you had uh, a very, you know, very competitive election where uh, the margin of victory was very low. Um, the, the, the party that won, the National Party of Nigeria, won in seven states. Uh, the Unity Party of Nigeria won in five states. And you had um, um, uh, MPP, that's the party of uh, Nambi Azikiwe, won in three states. And you have um, PRP in two states and uh, GMPP in two states. So we've never had... Since 1999 to date, you find out that apart from those two parties, APC or PDP or the different uh, iterations of them, uh, you find out that those two parties combined score more than 98% of the votes. I agree with Waziri. The 1979 uh, election was the most uh, hard fought uh, in the sense that the winner, uh, Elijah Shagari, had only 36% uh, of the votes, and he was closely followed by the other four uh, candidates. But in this republic, we haven't had uh, usually more than two parties in major contention since 1999. For your mandate, we shall stand. While all the attention will currently be on the top candidates making all the headlines, in a male-dominated presidential election, one question that has not been asked is, where are the women? So, that was quite an interesting um, analysis. Absolutely. You know, but what I find most, I don't want to use the word infuriating, but what I find somewhat sad is that women are not well represented in the political sphere. There should be more women gunning for higher positions. Yeah. That's not to say that we don't have the you know, people in the Senate and what have you. Okay, let's even go to the Senate. Mm -hmm. Guess how many women we have in the Senate? <laughs> National Assembly has about 4% women representation. Exactly. So in other words, there are about 7 or 10, less than 10 women in the Senate, and then less than 20 women in the House of right. Assembly. Right, so it's given us about 29 women out of 400 and 69 seats. What does that tell you? Extremely low numbers. Extremely low numbers. And you see, it, 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 it is sad because it's not as if we don't have women that are capable 
or doing good, or probably mm -hmm. even better jobs. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? When you think about the likes of somebody like an Ungozi Okonjo Iweda, who is the, for crying out loud, Director General of the World Trade Organization, it's obvious that she is more than capable if she did decide to run Absolutely. for the president of Nigeria. I mean, we have to understand that women are 50% of Nigeria's of the, population. Exactly. That yeah. is over 70 million women in this country. Who are not given a strong enough voice. Who are not and, and, and enough that voice. is quite sad because when you look at the top players, like they just showed the three top players, the Obis and the Tinubu and Atiku, where is the woman? Even if we're number five, mm. where's the woman? You know, before the show, I was telling you about the young lady that ran in, the, in its 2023 elections. I think she was in SDP. Mm -hmm. Her name was Kadidi Lamido. Mm -hmm. Young woman, Very about cool. your age, mm -hmm. you know, young and striving hard. I could see her that she believed in her cause. Absolutely. I could see that she was driven by a passion Absolutely. to want to make a difference. Absolutely. And I remember when asking about how she intends to respond, she said that, you know, it was going to be a public domain as in, mm -hmm. you know, little trickers of water make, make it an ocean kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I remember there was another other, other older friend of mine and said that I wasn't encouraging her while mm -hmm. speaking to her. And I said it wasn't a question of being discouraging, it was just a question of seeing facts as they are. Absolutely. Because if you recall, OBS Sequelisi ran the last elections. Mm -hmm. And of course, I went to one of her meetings and she was aggressive, she was passionate, mm -hmm. she was speaking all the right things, giving all the right vibes. But I don't, at the end of the day, I don't even think she seized her, her tickets for the, the primaries. The truth is, women tend to be a lot more humane uh -huh. because we raised human beings. We gave birth to humans. And we know what it is like to struggle, to go through poverty, to not have the best education. We understand Nigeria's biggest challenges. And if you look at some of the countries who are fastest developing within the past decade, mm -hmm. such as Rwanda, Rwanda yeah. is achieving over 50% mm -hmm. women representation across the entire government. Mm -hmm. At some point, Rwanda had 64% women representation. Which is a high number. A very high a number. A very high number. In fact, wasn't there some bill that was passed that 35% of mm. women would be represented in the, in, the, in the political sphere? But I mean, Niger. how, how real is that? We've just gave you this. We've just gave you given. We just have zero in president senate and house of rep. <laughs> Do you understand? But you know, sometimes I also wonder because I know it's not a cheap venture to get into this race. So I also wonder whether the inability to raise the kind of funds required to make a, an impact on the campaign trail is also what discourages women. Another thing I also wonder is that. Another thing I also wonder is that you know, be women women who have to be out there would most likely not have, I don't want to sound mm -hmm. patronizing, but would most likely not have enough time for family. Mm. And obviously, how many husbands want to be in the shadow of their wives? So these are issues that we need to get a broader perspective on and get other people's views. But I want us to finish this episode leaving some form of encouragement for women like you, <laughs> who are still interested in entering politics mm -hmm. and do not see it as an all men's game. I it's think not. So. It shouldn't be. And I think with time, we're going to see a lot more changes. Um, I hope so. I we're hope pushing so. for the 35% yes. to truly be represented. You, you have been on, on, on that road, so you should know better. Absolutely. You can advise us too. Absolutely. Okay. We're heading for a short break. When we return, we will be joined by Abosede George Ogan founder of Women in Leadership Advancement Network, and Ayo Obey, lawyer and human rights activist. Stay with us. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Joining us on the show as we discuss the role of women in Nigerian politics is Abosede George Organ, founder of Women in Leadership Advancement Network, and I obey, lawyer and activist. Welcome to Perspectives, both of you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for inviting me. No, was there a memo? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the... The, the color coordinated. We, 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 we got the memo. <laughs> Every, everybody, the everybody on Saturday... So <laughs> you call them to you miss the memo, right? <laughs> on Saturdays, everybody wears red because they support the Bring Back Our Girls movement. Oh my goodness! You see, we're, 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 we're kindred spirits. We're kindred spirits. Okay, so let's start with the most basic question by asking why representation of women in politics, especially at the highest level, is important. Since 1999, power rotation and ethnic considerations have featured prominently in the selection 
of presidential candidates and their running mates in Nigeria. However, this has been dominated solely by male candidates. Why can't the same quota system be applied to women in politics? Ayo, let's start with you. Well, I think that's really the point about it, because it's either that you're saying that we need a quota system to correct existing imbalances or historical imbalances, in which case, and that's why we have the federal character principle in Nigerian politics, or you just say that every, it should be an all commerce affair. But what we've seen is that in this part of the world, in this continent in Africa, that what has put women into the forefront is some form of quota system. And I think that if we, are accept, if we accept the idea that a quota system is okay for the general political space when it comes to ethnic balancing, and, I can, and you see the, the, the constant um, going on and on about religious balancing, um, that if we, can, if we can talk about those things, then I don't see why we, why, it's, it's actually illogical to omit the idea of also having a um, balancing when it comes to women, particularly at the top table in Nigerian politics. So you reckon that quota system would really help? Because at least that would automatically give a slot to women as in men instead. Yeah, well, if, you look, uh, if you look at the countries where you have a lot of women in politics in Africa, you will find that they have a quota system or they have specific seats reserved for it. It doesn't mean to say that women yes. can't apply and can't contest for the other seats, but it's just to bring them up. Because what you notice is that when, they, when women come to the fore in politics, then people said, oh, yeah. It turned out that the heavens didn't fall because we had a woman doing this or doing that or whatever it is uh -huh. that women do. And, um, but, and, and so it, it's just, just this idea that, ah, no, we can't have it. And then suddenly you see that, oh, we have it. And, you know, we still yeah. have our heads on our shoulders. Okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Thank you. The absence of political will, and even we in the media, have been blamed for not giving women aspiring for office a chance in the electoral process. What would your organization recommend that we do to change the narrative and ensure better coverage of women in politics a boss a day? Wow. So this is one that I'm very passionate about um, because I, I do think if I'm being honest, that the portrayal of women is one of the reasons why women don't go as far. I mean, we were just watching the top three candidates mm -hmm. who unfortunately don't even have female running yes. mates. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, in a country that has 49% yes. of the population as women. Mm -hmm. There is really something, and sorry, but everywhere I go, I really like to lay the numbers out mm -hmm. so that we really, because I think we don't want to assume that everybody who's watching this understands why we're having this conversation, right? So I think you already spoke about, you know, the Senate and House of Representatives, but out of 990 state assembly seats, mm -hmm. only 44 are occupied by women. It now. means that there are over 16 House of Assembly seats, please stay with me, where men sit down to decide what happens to the affairs of the people in that state that is made up of men and women. Mm -hmm. There is something wrong with that. Very wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, but let's backtrack a little bit. What is the perception that we have of women? We need to ask ourselves that. And how have we been socialized as women? Were we told that our role is only in the kitchen mm -hmm. and all of that? The other and so, room. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> and so, therefore, it's almost like you're not good for anything yes, else. Yes. Mm -hmm. But that's not correct because the evidence tells us that when it comes to human indicators around healthcare, around education and economic empowerment, women are actually, there is a direct correlation and this is evidence-based, you know, and we have to bring this to these conversations so they don't think that we're just talking. In, there is evidence, and this was done, a study done in India, that when they had women in leadership positions, right, at the helm of affairs in government, the human indicators around healthcare, around mm -hmm. education, increased. Why is Nigeria the maternal mortality um, capital of the world? Mm. Good question. Why, uh, why do we have the highest rate of child brides mm. in Africa? Yeah. What kind of statistic is that? It is because you don't have women who understand these issues at leadership positions. So I think that the media can play a significant role 
by starting to shape the perception. I mean, look, let's talk about what we've been hearing. We hear things like, who will take care of your home? Excuse me, please. Yes. <laughs> but if you ask all of us here about our families, you say, my mother is the pillar of the home. Well, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Are you aware that those same skills are transferable to leadership? So why is your mother the pillar of the home? She sorts things out there, but you don't think she can be your commander in chief? And that's the question. How is the media contributing in shaping people's perception to believe that actually this woman has the competence and capability to actually lead? So I think that there's a, there's a significant role that the, the, the media can play, but it's about perception. And let's be honest, we all have a role to play because for the women themselves, we've been socialized a certain way. And then for everybody else, we've been socialized to think that women's portfolio is limited to certain areas. So I think in terms of practical steps, we can start to showcase. And I mean, it's one of the things that my organization is doing um, to your point about what can organizations do. So for us at Willen, we are starting a show that actually starts to interrogate this perception that we have of women. And Changing start the mindset. to, Changing yes, the mindset. it's really okay. underpinned by cultural mm -hmm. and religious beliefs. Let's well, be honest. Deeply rooted in the culture. And let's start to understand even why are women ourselves the custodians of patriarchy? That's something that we're looking forward mm. to talking about. It, so what type of structural barriers do you believe prevent or rather limits women's ability to run for office? Welcome back to Perspectives. So back to you, Ayobi. What kind of structural bar um, barriers do you believe hinder women in their growth in the political um, leadership, growth in political leadership? It's more to do with the structure of our society and the, um, the approach of assumptions. I mean, you only have to look at the way, for example, we do have a few women who have been made deputy governors. Mm. Um, only one of them. Yeah, was in. Yeah, only only I one of them ever actually got to expanded it mm -hmm. a bit too wide. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it, that, that could be expanded. Only one of them ever got to the position of being governor by reason of the impeachment of her her, 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 her principal. Yes, but what I notice is that for most of the women who are deputy governors, they are put on the same level as the governor's wife. And so if you are a woman minister and something is happening, then the governor's wife is there taking precedence. And then you who are there in your own right, so to speak, however much support there may have been for the governor from his, um, from his, his home front, you as the person who is there as your own political, in your own political right, ideally, are, um, are, are either sort of subordinated or you are accompanying now, and so I think that those are the sorts of things that you see. And I think also that in, in terms of, I mean, I, I'm not having been brought up here, even though I've been observing now for good many decades, I can't really at the same time say that there is a structure in the open. It's rather a, it's sort of an acculturation type of um, structure. You know when they say gender is a construct? Because when women do actually come out and do something and take themselves seriously, whether it is, and we've seen it in different fields. There was a time when we didn't have um, bank executives, bank chief executives, when we didn't have women um, editing newspapers. Mm -hmm. All these things, we didn't have women in, um, as, as well, actually the judiciary had been a bit far ahead compared to the rest of, mm. the, of the professions. But we didn't have so many women at the top, even in the judiciary. And then suddenly we did, and as I said, we, we saw that there was nothing strange or unusual. We didn't have to worry about was the woman, um, uh, you know, who was cooking the dinner at yes. home and all these sort of um, irrelevancies because most of the women in these positions, in many cases, their children have grown in any event. And so they're not really necessarily, um, mm -hmm. it's not really the first thing that they have to worry about. Yes. And, you know, men are not quite as helpless as they are presented to be and all these sorts Neither of things. Neither are women. women are no, well, I mean, in terms of I can't cook my, I can't get myself some breakfast yes. or some, some yes. dinner. So I think that it is more this um, acculturation thing of, well, she can't do it. And then women, I think also, too, 
I mean, you talked about the young woman who took herself seriously, but yes. I think that some of the women who go into these positions, going for these contests, don't take themselves seriously, or they only feel that it they is don't in, take themselves seriously. They don't take themselves seriously. How is that? In in some of the ways that they present themselves, um, some true? of I can you know this. give an example. For I, I, I I I I just remember because I the, because the immediate last um, women woman that I felt really made a good showing and and presented herself and programs and so on was Professor Remy Shonaya, who okay. was on the COA party. Got the she got the ticket of the COA party, however, rather than the ticket of one of the major. Yes. parties. And I think that um, while the ideal is that you would say that women should go into these small parties and build them up mm -hmm. and, you know, build their constituency from there, I think that when they are in the major parties, you find... They are sidelines probably. Yeah, they, 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 and, 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 and being sidelined is, an, is, in a way, it's, it's like an evidence of you have not come with your structure. Yes. So you need, I mean, and I'm sorry to use this word structure because it has been mm. so demonized <laughs> in, um, I think, but you, you must have your personal following, you must have your, your own people. And, and you see it, even, and you, you also see it with men. If you go into a political party and it's only you that yeah. goes, no matter how big your name, you will not have the, um, the traction that you need to be taken seriously yes. when it comes to the top so table. Words, you've been tried and tested. Yeah, partly and, tried and, and tested, but also you show that you, you're bringing something to the political table mm -hmm. so that you are coming with your, whether it is, I mean, I'm not saying that you can move from one field at the top level to mm -hmm. the next. You have to still build up. Mm -hmm. But to, to just feel that, um, to feel that uh, this person has, is bringing some value to us mm -hmm. rather than we are the one who is conferring right. or to coin the, the phrase of the day, bringing you from the gutter and putting you in power. No, it takes time to you, build. It, 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 may, it may or may not take time, time, but you have to. You, but, but the point is that you come in as, as somebody who has their, 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 their position. But Absolutely. I don't know whether that really works. In, it, that, that is the norm, but I don't know whether that's the correct one because the truth of the matter is that you can have the merits Mm -hmm. But not necessarily structural. It doesn't make you less intelligent. Oh no, I'm not saying it, it doesn't. doesn't make you but politics. Of delivering. But politics is not just about this person is good. I mean, for example, people would even ask me, why didn't you go into politics and so on? I mean, I said, well, the bottom line was that I did not speak Yoruba language, and I didn't feel mm -hmm. that I should. I myself would not take myself seriously as a mm -hmm. candidate. But it's not a matter of does a person have merit or not. If you, if you, 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 there are many people who are brilliant. I completely agree. Thank but, you so yeah. much, Ayo. Mm -hmm. We are heading to another short break. And when we come back, we shall be switching gears to look at return to school for thousands of pupils in Nigerian primary and secondary schools. As we all know, a financially testing time for parents and guardians. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. Next Monday, September the 5th, 2022, thousands of primary and secondary school pupils are expected to resume academic activities across Nigeria after the usual long vacation. It's also that time of the year when parents and guardians get to feel a lot of financial pressure regarding getting their words ready for curricular activities. Again, summer schools are this time wrapping up in Europe and in some other climes where there are thousands of Nigerian international students. Back home here in Nigeria, nothing on the horizon suggests an end in sight to the strike by university teachers, which has grounded education at that level for the better part of seven months. Is there any reason to hope that these issues will be resolved anytime soon? Well, we are still here with our two guests, Ambassador George Ogan, founder, Women in Leadership Advancement Network, and lawyer and human rights activist, Ayo Obe. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for inviting us. So, we spoke about mm -hmm. women in policy. Although I feel that we haven't even delved, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface yes. as to what role women can do given the opportunities and powers provided for them to actually play a role. Because as you rightfully said during the break, Bosse, 
is that if a woman was the Minister of Education, for instance, there would be a much better impact in schools and the state of schools as they are today. I mean, as we speak, there are students who have been home for six months, seven months, eight months. It's ridiculous. Let's not even go down the path of security. The amount of children that have been kidnapped in the last couple of months or so, taking your child to school, your heart is in your mouth. What, are, what is the government doing to provide security for schools to ensure that when these children go to school, they come back home? So what is your take on the state of schools so far as yeah, we speak? You know, I think, I think the, the, the two conversations are related, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Because it, it's back to the fact that we do not have women in leadership positions, yes. right? But let's talk a little bit about education. Now, let's be honest. Security, education, nutrition... You know, these are all interrelated issues. Yes. And you can see how it still links back to the fact that you have 96% men ruling a country that is half women and half men. I, you know, we need to keep emphasizing that. But let's talk a little bit about education. You see, if we don't solve the security challenge, and you know, Nigeria's issues, we're talking about the government, but honestly speaking, let's focus on 2023. Now, if you are championing a candidate and they don't show you a job plan mm. they don't show you an education mm. plan mm -hmm. you don't show me a gender action plan what are we really talking about right because we can sit here and talk about what the current government is doing but let's be clear that whoever becomes the next president is inheriting all of this right i really feel sad for the youth of this country. It's painful. It's it's painful. It's painful. Sad. It's no, by the way, I hope you know that somebody was in year three in 2021 and is in year three in 2022 and will be in year three in 2024. At this Imagine rate. that. Imagine that. And then we talk about unemployment or we talk about unskilled or limited skilled young people. So we failed our youth. And we I have. think we Terribly. need... For and that's why I'm years. saying... Absolutely. And Terribly. that's why I'm saying that, look... As great as it is that this government is mm -hmm. doing this or that, let's start to challenge the I candidates because really I think we're shouting. Well, yeah, you think know, we're generous. shouting and championing mm -hmm. these candidates, but mm -hmm. ask your candidates. I'm glad that they're going to yeah. start campaigning soon. Yes. We should start to articulate what the electorate should be asking. Well, did we get the right candidates in in the first? But you phase, see, the point the is that you, 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 the, you, the electorate are going to make them the right candidates. Exactly. Look, as um, Abosede said. Uh, to me, it is these things are interlinked. Mm -hmm. If you don't have people at the top, if people ask about what, why do you need women, what are women's issues? They're not women's issues, they're people's issues. But you see, women bring this capacity to remove ego. Yes. And unfortunately, in politics, you need oh ego <laughs> in order to say, I'm the one that will, yeah. can do everything. It's like so badge. it's a kind of um, dis this mismatch yes. yeah. that you need to be able to so, and that's why in peace processes that work, you'll find that women are involved because they will come and they, they don't for, foreground their ego that I'm the one and I'm going to and these, other, these ones are useless and I'm the one that... Mm -hmm. And so I think that if we were able to get rid of some of the ego that people bring to these contests, yes. I'm the president of ASU, I'm the minister exactly. of education. Yes. And but all sometimes the it's almost about, it's not about the students anymore. It's not. Mm -hmm. But, but, but the issues. Been to any of the But in schools, if you look at the schools, I mean, that's what bring, I, I joined the Bring Back Our Girls movement because of my concern about the impact on girls' education yes. in um, the, when, when people send their children to school and their girls are kidnapped mm -hmm. and forcibly raped or married off. Yes. And I think that in Lagos State, we, in the movement, we actually went around the schools mm -hmm. in um, some areas of Lagos to see well, what, what, the state of the are your, what, are, what are your security arrangements? Can anybody just walk in and so on? Now, they do have some people, but we noticed that some of the people who are there as guards mm -hmm. are elderly men who really are being just pensioned off from, from the armed forces. So how does it, an old, so, an old but, man it, it, But at least there is some idea of... Or concept. People can't just yes. walk in and in out. And out. But it is, um, it is, it is, it has not been tested. And this and is the southwest. West. Yes. And this is the southwest. Mm -hmm. in, 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 mm -hmm. Because I think it's very important that security measures have to be taken. Absolutely. It, as a step forward in making sure mm -hmm. that these children are safe. And aside from that, the children themselves mm -hmm. have to be taught how to deal 
mm -hmm. with crisis when faced with it. In yes. other words, I don't know if it's in form of lessons life or life skills, you have education, fire life drills. Or when I went to school, we had skills. fire drills. In America, they teach them how to deal if they have a shooter in the school. Exactly. We need to also train our yes, children. Yes, we need to. It's based a reality. Based on the peculiarity well, of the no, education. No, providing the basic needs for these yeah. children. That's the challenge. And I don't think yes. the little needs that they yes. need, they, we're not basic. providing and then we're not even talking about it. We're not even talking about the displaced children, internally displaced children. Who have not been to school Who in have not been to school in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in months. Because no, in, 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 in decades. Yeah, decades. No, so, no, in, in years, decades, I mean. Yes, so in the I, actually, last yes. decade, yes. Mm -hmm. there are probably people who were born in IDP camps, grown up there, yes. and never educated. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think that they should actually build proper schools for them, because already the state mm -hmm. of some of these schools anyway are in, uninhabitable. So you can build school centers. Mm. So rather than saying you want to build another school to accommodate three or 400 children, you can build little, little centers around. And the less numbers of mm -hmm. students you have in that school, the easier. You can have something mobile and transferable. Them. Exactly. Yeah, I agree Do you understand? But Nigeria, first and foremost, needs a system of checks and balances that makes sure everything works. Accountability. Accountability. Because <laughs> over the, right the years, direction. we've tried to do <laughs> exactly. The thing is that the children are not going to be in suspended ideas. animation. Why, Why we all work of these things out? Yes, of course. Those chibos so have, have, have been gone yes, for more than eight years. But we don't have accountability. They remain hungry. No, but we have. No, we don't have to do it They're not going to be in the leadership. And those leadership measures are what can be achievable for now. Talking about oh, doing all this high end or high demanding statistics and meeting up with them. Whilst that is happening. What can we do now? So those that are displaced and haven't been out or haven't been able to go to school, build, like I just said, build mobile centers. Ask your candidates. You know? Ask your candidates. Ask that's your the final word for that's today. That's another thing that we have yeah. to watch, watch out for. Ask your candidates. But I think <laughs> what we live with today is that as women, we must always support each other. We didn't Very emphasize important. much on that. We must always support each other and do everything that we can within our powers, whether it's through media, whether it's through campaign, and what have you. To but we also women. need male allyship. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, uh, Absolutely. We can't, do, we can't do without yes, them. Yes, we need <laughs> So anyway, that's all we have time for today. To You've been be watching useful, Perspective Beyond Horizon News with me, Ruth Osime. And um Olaterura Majekodumi Oniru. Goodbye for now. Thank you.